Welcome to today's video. Clearly your girl is still a little congested, a little sick, okay? It's been a long week. Let's move past it. We're going to do a fitness Q&A today. I asked for fitness questions specifically um, earlier this week on my Instagram, so we're just gonna jump right into it. The first question is how to do your own programming if you cannot afford a coach or a guide. So I think my best advice would be to decide how many days per week you want to train. Um, if you want to train three, day, three days per week, probably make all of those full body days. If you want to train four days per week, probably go up or lower, up or lower. If you want to train five days per week, I would use a more bodybuilder, um, body part split approach and make sure that you are hitting each muscle group um, twice per week especially the ones that you want to bring up. For example, I don't, I only hit biceps and triceps once a week, but that's because they're not like a huge priority for me. If you're just getting started, um, I would just literally look up, you know, five day workout slits. I would not recommend training more than five days. Um, rest days are still important. And I think that five training days and two rest days is a good balance. Um, for someone who is you know into fitness if you're just getting started start on the low end start for three or four days and as far as like the exercises on those days um you don't need to do a ton of volume i used to do way too much in each session um, because you want to make sure that you're recovering so i would say depending on the day anywhere between five to seven exercises um and then per body part it's really going to be up to you like two to three, depends how hard you're going. If you're lifting heavy, if it's a power day where you're lifting heavy and doing lower reps, or if it's a hypertrophy day, which is focused on higher volume, more reps, lighter weight. Um, both of them are going to grow your muscles as long as you're focusing on progressive overload. And everything really is like, there's no hard rules. Like you just gotta go in there with a plan um, and find what works best for you. Personally, I used to think that my body could handle a lot more volume than it actually can and you're not going to learn that stuff about yourself until you go through it okay next question is would you rather have food dropped or cardio increased and this is really tough um i think i'm leaning toward i would rather have food dropped because cardio um i don't mind it like it is what it is but it takes time out of my day. So I can't be as productive if I'm spending a lot of time doing cardio. Um, as far as the nutrition side of things, like, yeah, it can suck to like not eat as much food, but I just see it as a new challenge and making new numbers work. And it doesn't take time out of my day, so I can still be productive. Worst full body exercise. Um, the only one that comes to mind is burpees, because those things suck. Jump squats also suck, but I don't know if that's considered full body. Are you ever satisfied with where your body is? I know I'm never satisfied. So, um, I don't think there will ever be a point where I'm like fully satisfied with my body just because I am such a progressive person. Like I'm always striving for like, what's next? How can I be better? What can I focus on and improve? Um, I think there's always room for growth and, you know, opportunity to get better. Um, but with that being said, I think it's really important to take time to reflect and remember how far we have all come on our fitness journeys, no matter how small that distance might feel. How many minutes of cardio do you do per week? Right now, I am still on four 25 minute list sessions. Um, that's what I started prep at and we haven't changed anything since I started prep five weeks ago. So how do you get over not being motivated to work out? So I think I've touched on this before. Uh, motivation is not permanent, right? It comes and it goes, but what stays is discipline. So even the days where you're not motivated, I just really don't see it as an option to skip shit. But that is because I am like very far into this fitness journey. Like it's just become a part of me now. Um, and again, I am a very like progressive, like work oriented person. So the feeling of guilt from skipping the workout is worse to me than being uncomfortable and going to the gym. 
because I'm tired or I don't want to do it or whatever. Plus, I guarantee you, you never regret a workout. And once I get like three reps into my first warm up set, I'm like, oh, I love this shit. Like I got good music going. Um, that's, that's a tip. Like get some good playlists, put on a cute outfit. That's another one, an outfit that makes you feel good. Um, and just go in there and like do the damn thing. You know, you don't have to kill yourself and not every workout's going to be amazing, but you really just got to play to your circumstances. Don't be a victim to them. Just think, okay, my energy is a little bit lower today. What can I do to kind of pump myself up? And for me, cute outfit and a good gym playlist definitely helps. What is your advice for someone new to fitness? I've been working out for about eight weeks. So kind of going along with what I touched on earlier, um, definitely ease into things. Don't go balls to the wall all at once because your body's going to be in shock. You're going to be sore as shit. You're not going to recover well. Um, but you're probably past that point now that you're eight weeks in. I, I would say, you know, just stick to the process, build this into your lifestyle, make it a consistent thing. Um, stay disciplined. And I, I don't think, I don't really know. Um, I don't think there's like any specific advice that you're looking for here, probably just general. Um, but what I will tell you is if you stay the course and you put in the work and you stay disciplined, like it will become a part of you and your life like will change not just your body, obviously physical results will happen, but the mental is insane. Okay. Like when you can stay disciplined with a fitness routine that translates into everything else. And if you are truly pushing yourself and you think, okay, like I thought I was at failure, but I can get another rep. And then after that one, you're like, oh, I thought I was at failure, but I can get another one. Like if you're truly pushing yourself in the gym, that mindset translates into everything else, whether it's school, work, relationships, traveling, like literally you, you start to believe that if you want something, you can have it. And I'm here to tell you that shit is true. There's no reason you cannot have everything you want. Okay. It's all, it's all up here. And the gym is where that starts for a lot of successful people. Ideal rest time for fat loss. So Here's the thing with fat loss, um, and everybody says it, I know, you have to be in a caloric deficit. The reason everybody says that is because it's true. Um, with that being said, you can increase your caloric deficit by increasing your work output um, and decreasing your rest times between exercises because your heart rate is staying higher. Um, whereas if you rest for like three to five minutes, your heart rate's going to come back down. So you're not burning as many calories. I don't put a lot of focus on this. Um, personally, I separate my cardio from my training. So rest times aren't really like a, a big focus for me. I do have a pump day where I focus on 45 to 60 second rest times just to like keep the blood in the muscles, you know, whatever. Um, but I don't think there's like necessarily an ideal time for fat loss. What's going to help you most is just making sure that you are ready to give your next set everything you have. Um, and maybe you do incorporate a day where you have 45 to 60 second rest time since just a pump day. Um, and you're not going heavy, heavy, um, but you're still challenging yourself. Top macro hacks on prep. So, um, I don't really want to like advocate volume eating until you are like very far into a diet and your carbs are pretty low, but volume eating hacks would just be, so you're, you're eating foods that are low in calories and they're like big portions, right? So vegetables, basically spaghetti squash is a great one. Zucchini noodles, um, cauliflower rice. Those are like the big three. And in terms of like, um, volumizing other foods, like oats or pancakes, put baking powder in there, put egg whites in there. Um, I don't know any other hacks. I mean, obviously it's, it's not, it's not hard. Like you just start switching things out. Like a caramel rice cake is 11 carbs and a lightly salted rice cake is seven. So, you know, you start making switches like that. Um, just lots of veggies, basically butter lettuce is really good. Um, shredded lettuce just because it, it digests well because it does not have fiber. Um, but yeah, m mainly vegetables. Oh, and then for peanut butter, use PB Fit, use powdered peanut butter instead of full fat peanut butter. Um, that can help you save some macros. And yeah, that's like all that comes to mind right now. Obviously, stay tuned. I'll be showing you all of my 
uh, prep hacks. It's been a couple of years since I've prepped, so if you want to see what I was eating back then, you can scroll back on my channel. I don't even remember. Probably the weirdest shit. Best soreness recovery tips while dieting. So since you are dieting and in a caloric deficit, your recovery is going to take a hit because you don't have that food to help your muscles recover, right? So I would say focus on stretching and foam rolling after every single session, even on your rest days, get massages. Um, and I know that's kind of like a, to me, that's like kind of a luxury thing. I'm like still very new to getting massages. So I understand that not everybody can do that, but stretching and foam rolling is free. Um, so, I mean, unless you, you want to buy a foam roller, but most gyms have them. So that, that would be my biggest advice. And honestly, something that has changed the game for me, and I'm not even trying to like sell you on anything right now. I'm literally telling you this because it changed my life. But First Form's Ignition that I take post-workout, it's a carb source and it's broken down as much as possible. So it absorbs into your body right after you work out and goes straight to your muscle cells. And I kid you not, my recovery and soreness is so much better after incorporating that. I take a half scoop of Ignition post-workout with a full scoop of Formula One, which is protein. So you got the protein, you got the carb. I've done talks on that in other videos. I'll, I'm not going to go into that here, um, but Ignition seriously, seriously helps. Where did you get your PT cert from? I am an ACE certified personal trainer. Fave cardio, definitely low intensity, steady state on the Stairmaster because I feel like I'm working, but I'm not dying. And I can just be on my phone, like watch YouTube, be on Instagram, whatever. I truly don't mind cardio. Like, I, I don't understand when people complain about cardio. I mean, I guess I understand if it's like hit, like sprints, like, cause those are shitty, like intervals. Those are scary. Um, but low intensity, like it's just, it's, it just is what it is to me. I'm not like, oh my God, I have to do this. Like it, it's just part of it. <laughs> do you track your sugars? No, I do not. Did you play any sports in high school? So yeah, I played volleyball for 10 years years year round like rec league summer league club school um and then i played in college as well not for the like d1 i went to the university of kansas which is a d1 school rock fucking chalk bruh um i did not play for the d1 team i played club in college and i miss it a lot um as far as other sports in high school i cheered for one season lol um and I was in band, not a sport, <laughs> but I was on drumline. Okay. So it's cool. Um, but yeah, that's it. How do you keep track of hormonal changes app or blood work? So I've had blood work done before, um, after I competed and like after I had reversed out of that for a while, just to make sure everything was a okay. It was, um, and I, I do recommend you get blood work done from time to time just to make sure everything is good, especially if you're in this fitness world, you're dieting, um, and you are manipulating your freaking nutritional intake, um, because your hormones and your thyroid are affected by that. And that can cause long-term problems. A lot of people in the fitness industry have problems with that. So, um, I would just keep an eye on it. But as far as hormonal changes, like I'm just pretty in tune with my body, um, when I check in with my coach, I let him know if I notice anything hormonal. Ladies, I'm sure you know what kind of symptoms and signs I am talking about. Um, so yeah, I don't really do anything like logistically to keep track of it. Um, but I do want to say I'm an advocate for keeping an eye on things. Tips for starting a coaching business. Um, I'm not a business coach and I feel like I'm still a baby in this whole entrepreneurship world, but I am getting to a point now where I'm like, holy shit, like I'm doing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's really cool. But I, I mean, if you want to start a coaching business, I would say like, just go for it. You know, um, I, I won't say certifications are everything, but I just felt better knowing that I was a certified, I am a certified personal trainer. Um, I wanted to have that before I helped people and took their health into my hands. Granted, I knew pretty much everything in the personal trainer certification course and the exam um, without having to pay for the cert, but I don't know. It's nice to have, have that um, to each their own. Thoughts and opinions on the new NPC wellness division. So Lexi and I were watching YouTube videos about like predictions of what this um, division is going to be like. And all we've heard is that it's going to be between figure and bikini. 
So in terms of like muscular size and the videos that we were watching, they were all predicting because I guess internationally there is a wellness division. Um, and the from what I saw, it's it's like a more quad dominant or leg dominant bikini look, um, not as lean as figure. So like the girls look fucking amazing. I will say that. Um, but they have very developed, like very, very developed quads, glutes, and hamstrings and, and calves. Um, and they're almost, I, I don't want this to come across in a negative way, but they're almost like bottom heavy. And again, they look great. Um, but that's just how the, how their physiques look. They've got a lot of muscle on the bottom and then, um, kind of what you would expect up top, like a, a, a solid looking top half bikini. Um, so I mean, I think it's cool. I obviously everything, anything new and anything changed, people are going to be reluctant to. Um, but I think if that like gives girls with a certain physique type an opportunity to compete and succeed and do well, because they can't, you know, like fit into the classic bikini look or the classic figure look. Um, that's awesome. I think it's really exciting. So that's good. Who does my training? My coach, Nick Tong, does my training. I want to lose weight. What are the best time intervals to eat if I wake up at 6 a.m.? The best time intervals to eat if you wake up at 6 a.m. are when you are hungry and when it works for you. Could you explain your thoughts on box squats? Are they beneficial or stick to squats? So, I personally don't think I've ever done a box squat. Um, I know what they are obviously. Um, and if you don't, it's where you have the barbell on your back. And when you get to the bottom of the movement, you sit down on a box, like on the corner of a box, and then you stand back up. So I think if you are new to squatting, um, you could use this as a form of progression into a full blown range of motion squat. Um, because the box is going to restrict your range of motion, depending how high you have it set. Um, I also think maybe once you are comfortable with full blown squatting, maybe you use a box squat as a variation, like a fun little switch up because it is going to hit your muscles, you know, a little bit differently than a full blown squat. Um, just because of the nature of the movement, right? They're, they're two different movements, even though they're very, very similar. And I think the thing with box squats is they target your quads more. So if you're looking to develop your quads more, develop your concentric strength. So that means like the portion where you're already down and you stand up, um, they're good for that. I also read that they're good to train around injury. So if you have some sort of injury and you're easing back into squats, um, box squats can be a good way to do that. Again, personally, I've never done them. I don't program them. Um, just because it's not like, it's not like a staple movement to me, but again, to each their own, like I'm a huge advocate of like, Hey, you got to do what works for you. And I think you could use it as a type of progression or a variation of squat. If you feel like it, you know, just, just be safe out there. <laughs> Last question is how do you manage your macros for other meals on days you have free meals? So I think this is buried in a video somewhere on my channel, but what I do is I, and I have all my clients do this as well. Take my macros for the day. Let's just make it nice and easy. These are not anywhere near my macros or what they've ever been, but for math sake, we will do this. Let's say I'm on 100 protein, 250 carb, 50 fat. I eat five times a day. So I'm gonna divide all of those by five, which means each meal is gonna be 20 protein, 50 carb, and 10 fat. Then what I'm gonna do is take away one of those meals because that's gonna be replaced by my free meal and hit those macros for the other four. Um, so that is going to be 80 protein, 200 carb, 40 fat. And then the free meal, you just don't be an asshole. You structure it around protein, make sure you're getting your protein in. You're not just eating some like a carb bomb or fat bomb. Make sure you're getting some protein in there um, and enjoy it, you know? And as far as uh, the rest of the day, like say you're having your free meal as like brunch or lunch, it's, it's not like your final meal. Um, if you are not hungry, after that meal, don't force feed yourself the carbs and the fats for the rest of the day. Just focus on getting your protein in, okay? So that's that's my advice for a free meal day. Glorious days, I'll tell you that.
that is all the questions for today. The next q and I do will be a fun one. I always ask for these on my Instagram, but if you want to drop questions below, fun questions for next q and I will definitely take those into account. And that is what I got for you today. So if you watched until now, I'm taking all my good vibes. I'm sending them your way. If you could give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell before you leave, that would be dope. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Oh.